looking for a break from the usual fantasy action-packed games? Dive into the world of office romance with Sympathy Kiss. Get ready for drama, love, and maybe even a little bit of cubicle chaos. From water cooler gossip to secret rendezvous, this game might have it all. In this review, we'll tackle the realism of the different love interests' personalities and roots, the heroine, gameplay visuals, sounds, and more. As someone who handles development of mobile applications for work, I do feel that I can relate to the setting of the game. So does Sympathy Kiss have a leg to stand on in terms of realism? That is, aside from the fact that the love interests, despite being hot, are all single? Or is it just full of fluff? A quick reminder though that while we'll only show clips from the official channels, there might be some that you might consider minor spoilers. Sympathy Kiss follows Akari Amasawa's journey as she navigates the world of office romance and career challenges at Estario, a mobile app company. Assigned to revitalize the struggling Estarchi news app, Akari faces the dual pressures of saving the app from closure and finding her true passion in life. And who hasn't been there? There are only a few people who know what they want to do in life. At least for me, it took me a while, or maybe I'm still looking for it. I'm not even sure if it's only one thing too. Along the way, she interacts with six love interests, balancing her work and personal life through decisions that influence the outcome of each route. The game has three endings, aptly named as Work, Love, and the Best Ending where you balance both work and love options. It's work-life balance for the win because there's no such thing as work-life blend. In each chapter of each route, there's a spin-off where we can see the love interest's point of view on certain events in the chapter. And it's something that I actually look forward to since we get a glimpse of a different perspective on specific scenarios. That said, starting the game felt weird to me because the heroine has no dialogue. That is aside from the choices. And I guess you could read her thoughts at least? It reminds me of those silent protagonist games where characters just maybe repeat what the protagonist supposedly said. I got used to it halfway through the common route, so it wasn't so bad. At least it was a different experience altogether. Aside from the text choices, another feature of the game is the reaction where players may be offered two emotional responses to choose from. Emotional response options include feelings like joy, anger, sorrow, etc. Depending on the choice made by the player, later conversations in the game's storyline are also affected. The common route is pretty short and I feel that the length is just right for the setup. You'll meet all the characters and settle on your first impressions right off the bat. Now that I think about it, all of the characters' personalities are pretty strong. The culture of the heroine's workplace is introduced here as well, both the supportive kind and the not-so-supportive one. It does trigger me a bit since I can't help but compare it from my experience which leans more on the professional and collaboration-friendly dynamics. I guess being a skeptic is easier in a slice-of-life genre, especially if the setting is very much relatable. That said, let's proceed with the characters. There is no recommended route order as there is no overarching plot of any sort. Mitsuki Saotome he is the eccentric hitmaker in charge of planning and development. Despite his young age, he's known as a genius thanks to his streak of creating excellent products. He's intelligent with a casual attitude that occasionally rubs others the wrong way. Even so, his personality is sweet and quite friendly, so despite the occasional complaint, people find him quite likable. My first impression of him is that he will be this loud and annoying Genki archetype, and he is sort of that, but annoying in a different sense. He is voiced by Gakuto Kajiwara, known for his work as Mitsuki from Jack John, Mikado from Cafe Enchante, and Kamura from Tangoku Struggle. I actually like Mitsuki outside his route. I see him as a dependable colleague and he does rise to the occasion. Unfortunately, too much of him is just not for me. The central conflict in his route lacked depth I was hoping for, and the extras felt flat, merely serving as background filler. I do think though that there is significant character development on his part from how he handles his work and how he treats the heroine and his colleagues. Kohei Minato He is the heroine's cynical colleague who handles operations. He joined the company months after her. That's why even though he's older than her in Mitsuki, he treats them both as his seniors. He can be a little cold and while he manages to get his work done, he never seems very motivated. And I'm glad that there's actually a reason for that, which you will explore in his route. He's not just mean to the heroine for the sake of having a mean-spirited stereotype in the roster. My first impression of him is that he could be kind of mean since he can look a bit intimidating, which is spot on. He's voiced by Yuichiro Umehara, known for his work as Kanos from Cafe Enchante, 
Pascalia from Radiant Tail, and Ben K from Biroshana Senki. I quite enjoyed his route, and even though his main conflict and the resolution of it is nothing to write home about, his interactions with his family and even with Mitsuki are just adorable and funny. His interactions with the heroine were amusing, in how they changed from a distraction to a more wholesome relationship. Their exchanges are one of my favorites in this game. Yoji Kobase He is the heroine's boss and is placed in charge of leading the renewal of Estarchi. He handpicked every member of his team, including the heroine. He's a workaholic with no real personal life which I can relate. And his stern look and strict tone make him feared within the company. My first impression of him is he is serious and intimidating, which he kind of is but can easily be misunderstood. He is voiced by Kazuyuki Okitsu. Known for his work as Anko from Virch Evermore, Tsukuyomi from Olympia Soiree, Epidogi from Cafe Enchante. In his route, I actually agree with his rationalization on how to resolve the conflict and admire his determination for it. The cast, his team, are just busybodies really, but who can blame them? He's the embodiment of the leaders eat last kind of thing. His interaction with the heroine is quite fun, especially outside work. You just know that something will happen in that kind of setup. I loved his POV the most, it shows how clumsy he can get, sort of a gap away from his usual confident boss persona at work. Rokoro Yoshioka He is the son of the president of Tempesty, a chief business partner of Estario. He's kind and collaborative with the heroine, even though she doesn't work directly for his company. My first impression of him is he's this clueless rich kid and I couldn't be more wrong. Well, aside from the rich kid part. In his route, you'll find that he's a hardworking individual that everyone respects. He's voiced by Seichiro Yamashita, known for his work as Hugo from Birch Evermore, and Yuichi from Winter Swish. Yoshiaka is the embodiment of a prince as stated by both Akari and Nanami, a female colleague. And you'll find that he does try to live up to that image. His route was pretty fun and dramatic, and I would have to agree it was fake. I'm a sucker for those types of amazing coincidences. I really enjoy the Astarchi team in this route and how they support the heroine on multiple occasions. I'm glad that it's not the whole world is against them. Nori Tainaka He is a young man Akari found collapsed on the street who sweet-talked his way into her life. First off, why? Why would you pick up someone off the streets? The heroine has no regard for her safety. It could be a cultural thing, maybe Japan is safer, I don't know. He is voiced by Ken. Known for his work as Shelby from Cupid Parasite, Limbo from Bustafellows, and Yukimaro from Nine Rip. While he does grow on you on his route, I'm still technically on the fence about how I feel about him. That said, I do think Akari shines the most as a professional here than in any other route. Which is funny since Nori isn't even a co-worker, then again maybe that's the reason why. I'm not going to undermine the main conflict in his route, and I do think the kind of support shown is a crucial step. Nori has always been touchy-feely with Akari from the get-go, but it's just not my cup of tea. Shuya Usui He is the owner and bartender at Evergreen, a restaurant and bar with a great vibe located near Astaria. He's a keen listener who always gives you his utmost attention with a gentle smile on his face. He's voiced by Yuya Uchida. Known for his work as Furutsugu from Scarlet Fate, Akira from Kamigami no Asobi, and Arthur Rimbaud from Bungo Stray Dogs. In the promo, he was campaigned as a romanceable sub-character, so his route is a bit shorter than the others. I was pleasantly surprised by his route. Older love interests aren't usually my preference, but I definitely enjoyed his. I liked how he handled Akari's budding crush. The Astarchi team is very supportive of Akari in this route as well. I actually enjoyed Akari's go-getter persona here, and while I wasn't too thrilled about the ending, it does kind of make sense. Before discussing the heroine, there's actually not one, but two hidden characters in this game. Once you go through the game, they are actually pretty obvious. And to go to their route, you'll have to branch out from two of the main love interests, so one for each. Hidden character 1 is voiced by Soma Saito. Known for his work as Ives from Bridge Evermore, Minio from Color Malice, and Kikonosuke from Tengoku Struggle. There is a trigger warning for his route, so if you're not comfortable with any not-so-good happenings, just stay clear of his route. And while it does show real-life issues that women often face, I wasn't exactly content with how it was resolved. Hidden Character 2 is voiced by Kosuke Toriyumi. Known for his work as Ichiya from Variable Barricade, Kageha from Psychedelica Black Butterfly, and Chojira from Nightshade. His route is one of my favorites, 
the only downside is that it's just too short. Without spoiling anything, his route focuses on a type of wholesome adult relationship. And I appreciate how important communication and clear boundaries are to him. Story scores 15 out of 25, while characters score 20 out of 25. The heroine Akari was, well, a different experience. Her having no dialogue threw me off, but she definitely has her own personality and thoughts that anybody can relate to, especially if they're in the same circumstances as her. One year has passed since Akari began working as a UI designer at Estario, and just as she was getting used to her responsibilities, she was encouraged to switch departments and join the team responsible for Estarchi, an app rumored to be getting terminated soon. I myself would also be filled with worry if that was the case, and given her inexperience, a year on the job isn't really that much, anxiety is to be expected. While she does make some questionable decisions from time to time, I find that I do not mind. I can actually see her as a young junior of mine at work who scrambles to make the best out of whatever she finds herself in. My first impression of her was that she was going to be this flat, self-insert heroine, but to my surprise, she is quite complex with different layers shown in different roots. While for the supporting cast, I'm actually not quite fond of them aside from Nanami. Their personalities just felt flat to me. I do feel however that it could be because of our perspective as Akari. I do know real life people who just won't budge on their beliefs and won't show you the other side of their mask because of who you are. And the way that it evokes this kind of emotion from me, even when I say that their personalities are flat, speaks volumes about the writing of the events. Heroine and supporting cast score 12 out of 20. As for the visuals and music, the lead artist Fuji Rito also worked on the gorgeous game Lover Pretend. The sprites and the CGs are beautiful. And while there are some weird poses, I really like that there are multiple poses and outfits for spring, fall, and casual. I think it's a nice touch of realism compared to other otomis. Then there's the music. The overall soundtrack is quite catchy and smooth. The opening By My Life, Found My Love was very upbeat while the ending Sympathy Kiss matches perfectly with the theme. Both are performed by Janik Palette. Visuals and music score 16 out of 20. Sympathy Kiss is on the shorter side compared to other commercial titles, but with all the main and hidden love interests, I do believe you'll get your money's worth for the average price of Nintendo Switch commercial titles. And the unique gameplay experience definitely comes through. Not to mention, the limited edition was beautiful. I felt like I was working for Estario myself. Value for price scores 8 out of 10. Can those events transpire in real life? Yes. Are they far-fetched? Also yes. Then again, if it was full of mundane everyday life, it wouldn't be as interesting. From awkward first encounters to steamy office romances, this game has a good amount of drama that explores the complexities of modern-day office dynamics and relationships. Sympathy Kiss provides a unique perspective on romance targeted towards women in the workforce. It scores 71. Speaking of women in the workforce, a favorite heroine of mine handles it pretty well. Check out our review on this otome and you might find a hidden gem. See you there!